Is your beard starting to split down the middle and it's driving you absolutely crazy? Well, first and foremost, you are not alone. There are many of us that can absolutely understand the frustrations that you have. And in this video, I'm going to tell you guys the top three reasons why this is happening. We can call it a French fork, a beard split, a beard part, whatever you want to call it. It's likely the same thing caused by the same reasons. Now, I want to break these down to number one, help you understand why this is happening. And then number two, possibly give you a chance to adjust what's going on and maybe it will make it better for you. Unfortunately, there's no magic answer. It may never get better, but at least you can understand why and possibly take those steps to advance. Hopefully this one will be helpful. Let's get into the introduction. <laughs> To begin, let me properly introduce myself. As you've probably read, my name is Dan C. Bearded, and I do want to say thank you guys for checking out this video and this channel. If you're excited to learn more about this topic and help understand your beard and maybe make it a little bit better for your preference, please hit a thumbs up on this video. And if you want to learn even more about beards and you're not already, consider hitting that subscribe button so you stay up to date with new videos. You can go back and browse old videos. That is beyond appreciated. And shout out to those returning subscribers. So, Three things that we're going to go over. Number one is the most likely, the most potent cause of the beard split of the French fork, and that would be your neckline. Where you establish where your beard is at underneath the hair, underneath the actual beard. Now this can come from two angles. One, it can be natural. It just is the genetics that you're given. Some of us have lower and thicker necklines than others or it is something that you created, whether it was your barber or yourself, by establishing that neckline higher up with a trimmer, with a razor, however you wanna go about it. Now here's kind of a general rule of thumb. The higher the neckline, the neckline that is closer to your jaw, closer to your chin, is going to make your beard split more easily and earlier. The reason why is the lower your neckline, the more backing, the more body, the more density your beard gets, and that gives it supporting actors. That gives it that kind of like Velcro effect where they can lean on each other, kind of intertwine into each other to not split. The more beard you have, the denser beard you have, the less likely it is to split at any given length. Now, of course, the longer you go with your beard, the more likely that is going to split because of losing that density, losing that transparency that happens to all of us. For me, it happens to be right around 12 inches where my beard starts to become more transparent and where I really start to notice that French fork. So. Things that you wanna consider. The bigger beard that you wanna get, the more natural and low the neckline you can have. You wanna stop trimming it. You wanna stop shaving it. Just let that bad boy go. Now, if it's natural, what can you do about a higher neckline? Not much. Truly rock what you got and adjust your style accordingly. If I had a higher up neckline, I probably wouldn't have this long of a beard. I just go with what my genetics give me, right? I'd say it all the time, but people say, hey man, what are your beard goals? I don't have any. I just want it to look good, full, and dense as I grow it out. I love a big beard, but I don't like a transparent beard. So I kind of just let that guide it. But the most common reason your beard is forking is because of too high of a neckline naturally or man-made. Now the second one seems obvious, but I don't think we always think about it, and that's wind. The longer your beard gets, the more likely it is to catch wind and part and split. Now when you have a big beard, if it splits there, that can really start to cause that fork. Now here's an important point. The more likely to stay into that split or into that fork is if you have in solid products like butter, balm, or wax. Now this can be counterintuitive because people would think, Dan, if I wear a butter, if I wear a balm, that's for a little bit, the balm's really gonna style. The butter's gonna give a little bit of style. The wax is crazy styling. Wouldn't it prevent the fork? No, because you're not gonna beat wind. If you get a really big gust of wind and you have any beard of length and size and like just substance, it's going to lose to the wind. It's going to split. Now, if you don't have butter, balm, or wax, it can kind of come back together, right? I just did this right before filming the second segment. I like, okay, all right, we're doing all right. Maybe give a little fluff here. Then it comes back to itself. Cool, good. If you have butter or balm or wax, when you split it, oh man, now it's gonna wanna stay split because that's what the styling does. It grabs onto where it's at. So if you feel like wind is an issue, my advice would be try to go during the day with beard oil only. 
And then the third most common reason you start to really see the fork or the split is that humidity that's in the environment. Humidity is just moisture, and what happens is it latches onto your beard hairs. Our beard hairs have an opposite charge of the humidity moisture that's in the air, so it's gonna go draw right to your beard. And what that does is it makes it heavier. It makes those hairs that wanna kinda like bunch up and frizz up, and what that's gonna do is just make that beard split, it's gonna be exaggerated. Man, I have some of my worst beard days, some of my worst beard fork split days when I go down south to like Georgia, to Florida, to those really humid areas, forget it. I just kind of have to live with it at that point. It's going to happen. If you're in those climates, try considering using more towards the lighter or thinner viscosity oils. That can help take a little bit out of the weight, which is gonna allow your beard to be a little bit more free and not really get like constrained based on the humidity that's out there. So to wrap this up and not draw it out any longer than it needs to be, your neckline is the most important. Then other factors would be the wind and the humidity that are causing those French forks. Now, again, I said, I want to make this video first and foremost for you to understand what's going on. And I say that because we can't just offer perfect fixes. If your neckline is naturally high and you want to grow a big beard, a long beard, chances are it's going to split at some point between, I don't know, four inches to where my beard is, you're likely gonna have that fork and there's no solution. There's nothing that you can really do other than embrace it or change up your style. So I didn't wanna make this like a cause and solution video because that's not fair to quite say. However, if you were like, oh, that does make sense with the humidity. Oh, that does make sense, I've been wearing balm. There possibly is a solution that can help your situation. I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Do you go through this? Have you experienced a fork? Have you experienced a part? Does it not bother you? Does it drive you crazy? Have you found any tips that can help you along the way? Especially now that we understand it, maybe you're like, oh, light bulb, this, and then whatever you wanna say, drop it down below. Let's keep that conversation going. And these comments really can help people out and I do really appreciate them. So thank you guys for watching today. Cannot wait to read those comments and respond to every single one. One more time, my name is Dancy Bearded. Please stay bearded and stay positive.